Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the SOC's fourth Camera Operator of the Year nominated film. And we have Scott Sakamoto here in uh, Panavision. Thank you very much, Panavision. Thank you very much, Scott, for your work on Descendants. Thank you very much. We all just got a chance, I'm Dave Frederick. We all just got a chance to uh, watch this amazing film, um, Alexander Payne's film. Uh, that takes place in Hawaii, and what was it like to work in Hawaii? Oh, that's, that's, a no, that's, an easy, that's an easy question. It's odd, yeah, but okay. it's more for the cameras and such. Uh, Hawaii is just amazing. I mean, you can tell by the scenery and by our shots that it's a, it's just a beautiful place to shoot, and it's hard to go wrong, no matter which way you point the camera. Did you get to go um, uh, uh, surfing with um, the famous surfer there, the guy who Laird. was the killer, Baird? Yeah, Laird, 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 Laird Hamilton. Hamilton. Yeah, yes, Laird he Hamilton. did uh, teach us all how to paddle surf, paddleboard. Oh, cool. Yeah, so yeah. it was wonderful. He has a house in uh, in Kauai. So, uh, so you filmed on uh, the island, the Big Island. Did we filmed on Oahu. Oh, oh, the Oahu, but you didn't actually. The, the you know, they we said they the went to the Big Island, island for the school. For well, Alex's school. Actually, we didn't shoot that in Hawaii, but we shot a couple of driving shots. We went there for a half of a day. We flew into Hawaii. Oh, good. But you all stayed in like the Waikiki area. Yes. Okay, great. And the Ilikai. Yes. Some people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. the that's the, uh, the the hotel everybody stays. And then you went up to the Princeville area of yes, uh, uh, Kauai. Kauai. Yes. Great. Which was my first time there, and it's beautiful. Yeah. It really is. And that's all. Is that truly old Bishop Estate? That area there, because the Bishop yes. Estate owns most of Hawaii. Yes, they are the true. true that I know. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, was this a film job? Yes, it was. Okay. It was all on uh, on Kodak, and it was all with uh, Panavision's XL and their lenses. Great. So we're yes. in Panavision land. There you go. I've been very fortunate doing nothing but film jobs, so I'm not even sure what that camera is. <laughs> Seriously. Truly. Seriously. So you're you, Scott. You do mostly feature films. Right, and so the feature films you do have been limited They've to film. They've all been film. I've been quite fortunate, and uh, though I do feel a little out of place when I get ca get called on a day job and go into you know see this Alexa and not know what to do with it. You have to put your eye to the eyepiece <laughs> exactly. and then move it and glide it around like <laughs> you're known for. Uh, what was the most challenging shot you did on this picture? Ooh, that's a good question. Uh, The whip pans, yeah. Uh, thank you, thank you. They, they are tough because you know, the, you know, you 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 just have to just go and hopefully you get you land at the spot. And uh, you know, we didn't do a lot of rehearsals and we didn't do a lot of takes, but that was kind of Alexander's vision: is to go with something really slow and then just whip over on a reaction. What and is your technique for stopping at the right spot? Oh, it's just luck. Seriously, I mean, you uh, do a that is a technique, and it's really just luck. Very good. Um, a lot of it has to do with positioning yourself, kind of at the last, you know, where you're going to be most comfortable at the end frame, perhaps, or yeah. when the if you're on a, a a fluid head to get the tripod handle will stick you right into this gut, and you know it to stop. Helps, yes. yeah, it always helps. So <laughs> Alexander Payne, oh, uh, have you worked with him before? That was the first time. Okay. And uh, it was a wonderful experience. I mean, he's got a great sense of humor, as you can see in the movie. And he's got a great vision. It's it's kind of quirky in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. You know, he's got a way of, you know, it's kind of old fashioned. You know, we had we did those. I don't know if you noticed, but did those big zoom out pans and stuff, which you don't see in movies. You know, you saw them in the old days, but he, you know, he kind of grows up. He grew up on those kind of movies, and that's what he wanted to do. An and homage to Hawaii Five O. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so, uh, I, what about uh, Faden Papa Michael? Have you Faden, with that him? was my first job with Faden, wow. and uh, I have to say it was a great experience with him. He's he's a great collaborator, and we really got along well. We really saw this. We were all on the same page. We really saw the same thing, and uh, it was really nice. First time DP job, first time director, director job. How'd you get the job? Well, I think well I've known Faden for a long time, and he's known me, and we've never had a chance to really work together. And we've I haven't been available one way or another or whatever the timing was. And so he, you know, he called me and says, you know, I got this job in Hawaii. And, you know, would you like to come? I said, sure. Yeah, you know. job, Hawaii, there's exactly. never a no answer. Right, and, uh, you know, and then with Alexander Payne. Right, right. It's just, just, just an amazing story. Um, uh, the story was written, and I looked at the credit just now, and I didn't really 
get that, but it seemed like somebody with Hawaiian name. Yes, it was based off a book. Her name is Kauai Hennings. And she actually was in the movie. She was the secretary that I whipped over when he was sitting at the desk uh -huh. at the beginning of the movie, uh, kind of a petite uh, brunette. And she was also in the the scene where everybody was gathered and he was telling everybody to go see her, go see my wife and all that. And she was she had the long, long shot on her for a while. So she's, she, she should take a lot of credit for it because it was her book that uh, really was the basis of this movie. Do, when you get called for a job, do you spend a great deal of time reading through the script and getting to know the script really well so that, you know, tell me if, if that makes a big difference in your work as a camera oh, operator. Oh, I think it's very important to know the script and to know the story and to know what the DP's vision is and the, what the director is, what he's looking for. I think it's very important. And so how did they impart that to you in, in a pre-production fashion? Did yes, you get, yes. what did you get, we tear sheets or just old talk? We talked old about story? it. We, had, we, you know, we go have a drink, you know? Yeah, and I mean, uh, in Hawaii, as <laughs> they call it, talk story. So, yes. you know, so you were able to go out and have, and how much prep time did you get? Oh, it wasn't very long for me. I mean, I was there probably four days before shooting. Okay, so once you so unpacked your bag, yeah. and you're out there and, and doing story conferences right. at the bar. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. <laughs> Mai Tais and yeah, yeah, the umbrella yeah. drinks. Um, but uh, but do you do agree though? It makes a great deal of difference if you have a sense of what the story is for the timing for your moves. And and did you set up most shots? Did you work with the director or did you work it's with fade, the DP? Fade the three and, of you. And Alexander and I both. Would, okay. You know, you see a rehearsal. You work out what the shot, you know, what what the scene means and what you want to do and how you want to express the uh, the scene the best way. Was there most? Was there much multi-camera? Did you just do it single camera? Uh, it was mostly single camera. Once in a while, we would do multi-camera, especially when you had groups, you know, and you had a chance to pick off, you know, a reaction or two, and Faden would r operate the other camera. All right. What about um, uh, steady cam versus uh, standard camera operating? There wasn't a whole lot of steady cam in this movie, was there? No, there was probably half a dozen shots, and uh, it was it was all done very subtly. Uh, you know, Alexander wasn't a had never used Steadicam before, so it was like when we did the first Steadicam shot, he came over and shook my hand and says, "That's my first Steadicam shot of all my movies." So I Lit thought that was funny, you know. Little did he know what <laughs> great tool and expertise he had in his hands oh, there. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, this is not your first time being nominated for this award. Uh, matter of fact, uh, I had to reconvince myself while watching this film that I'm supposed to be watching the camera operating because the thing with Scott, and, and I knew this when I watched Michael Clayton, I think that it was the first nomination, yeah, right? Yes. Yeah. I went and saw it a second time because I didn't watch the camera operating the first time. And second time, I had to re mind myself again to watch the camera operating because Scott's camera operating is just so transparent you don't see it which is to me the absolute mark of a, prof a true professional oh well, thank you but I think a lot of it has to do with the story George Clooney is such an amazing actor he has come through so, I mean starting in ER and doing all that and, and, and what he brings to the screen is like such an honesty and I think that's why everybody is kind of mad for him because he is like the real deal he's just trans he just transcends any kind of star, and he just is a real person, and he brings that. When you're saying that he's the nicest guy, or w you know, the work with, I mean, does he have a particular method that he works with? I mean, and how do you work with him with the camera? You know, I think his particular method is to make everybody laugh because he likes to do practical jokes. He tries to keep the set very light. You know, he's not a very he's not a method actor. You know, he he can turn it on when you say action. Uh, but up to then, he's he's all smiles and mm -hmm. he's very approachable and you know he he's he's part of the crew. He really is, and uh, you know I hope everybody gets a chance to work with a guy like that because it really makes it a lot easier. When you worked with him as a director, how was that? Was he a little more tense? Was he still t telling the jokes? He was a little bit more tense. Uh, he obviously had to be more concentrated, and uh, but he still did his fair share of mm -hmm. jokes. Mm -hmm. But uh, he came in well prepared as a director. And uh, I would, I would say he's probably was the easiest, one of the easiest directors to work with in terms of speed. Mm. I mean, we did, I did Ides of March with him, by the way, and we shot that in 39 days, and it was probably the shortest amount of hours collectively on a movie I've ever worked. Wow, he's following so in the Clint Eastwood. Oh yes, many, many seven, eight, nine-hour days. Wow, perfect. You know, he knew what he wants, you know, he knew what he wanted, and we went right in there and did it. He didn't waste time, didn't do a lot of takes. 
and uh, it was a, a great, great experience. A couple of kids in this cast. Yes. Um, were there particular limitations that you felt? Um, you know, was there like a rush to get the kids off the clock and all that stuff working with the kids, or was that just mm. kind of for all, a little bit Hawaii style? It was well. It would. Th- I didn't really feel any pressure to, to hurry and get off. You know, to get them off the clock. Right. They were very professional. That little girl, Amara, was was. Amara played Scotty. Yes. Yeah. She was fantastic. I mean, she. I mean, she was a little kid, so sometimes you had to like. You know, keep an eye on her. You know, she'd lose her concentration, but she knew her lines, and uh, she was really wonderful. And then the mom being in a coma, um, she obviously wasn't in a coma between takes. Um, so, what was there? Was there any? She time? was a method act- actress. She oh. had to, you know, because she she stayed pretty quiet. She did. You know, she didn't want to stir up anything. Right. And, and she needed to be calm and relaxed, so she stayed that way. She had her uh, day on the boat. She had her day on the one day on the boat, yes. Yeah, she had her day. I mean, on we the boat. hardly talked to her because she would come in and she wanted to to sleep. Really. Right, right. So uh, that was really kind good. of a little off-putting, though, wasn't it? it Just was, it's a weird, yeah. weird role. <laughs> what was? And to get screamed at from George, you know. Oh yeah, exactly, yes. exactly. But I mean, you were on the beach. You were in. Well, I don't know where you in waterfalls. There were a lot of second. Those were second unit. All the interstitial shots of all of the raindrops and all those gorgeous the clouds. The raindrops were us. But yeah, there was a couple of the cloud shots and uh, the people in at the beginning of the movie, the, the opening sequence when you see people walking around mm-hmm. downtown uh, Oahu. That was uh, second unit. Yeah. So when you're filmmakers, you get these wonderful um, day passes into some of the most amazing places, uh, museums and private property and, and all these just really particularly special places. Um, I think that you guys got some good day passes, didn't you? Oh, yes. And we had a lot of time to enjoy it, you know, because our hours weren't long either with Alexander. So we had, we had a good opportunity to go out and play, especially many, in Kauai. How many days were you on the picture? 40, 42. Oh, well, that's not so long. Yeah, it wasn't yeah. too bad. And how long ago was that? That was last summer. Okay. Uh, I mean, a year ago was last summer, so it was a year and a half. Now. A year and a half. Yeah. Now, there weren't really any visual effects in there, were there? There were maybe, like, there was a crew that was, like, five names versus 12 pages. I'm trying to think. The only green screen we had was the airplane flying over to uh, Kauai. And that had a great shot out the window. Yeah. I almost, I did worry, I wonder yeah. about that, that, you know, just perfect perspective they had going over the hills. There. And that, I think, was our only visual effects. But all the other interior of this, was that just um, at Honolulu Airport on an airplane and everybody's sweltering in the airplane while yes. you're doing those shots yes. uh, in, a in a real airplane? In a real airplane, yeah. On yeah. a real Hawaiian air. Yeah, in the humid. Yeah. I mean, it really is humid. And, and when you're working in Hawaii, it's hot. Yeah. You know, it's like it's not always very comfortable. A lot of AC yeah. in all the studios there. What studio were you in, in Diamond Head? Uh, we were in a warehouse for uh, that sequence. Okay, and for for but they did build some sets, didn't they? Did you have the any only sets? set was the hospice set, which is okay. the hospital where mm-hmm. she died. Okay, that was the so only. So they built that. That was the only real set. And was that in that warehouse? Yes. What about was, was that was in old, Pearl or? No, that was in Oahu. It was Oahu. It was, okay. it was like an old. It was an empty. I'm trying to think. A uh, 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 computer store. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So that was handy. Like comp, comp computer. Was yeah, a, copy was server. Yeah. Oh yeah, Comp USA. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, what was the other thing? Um, the uh, the different, um, I guess it was the whip pans and oh, that's what what it was. Uh, compliments on the uh, all of the close ups, the traveling close ups, um, especially when oh, the, the family is oh, having yeah, yeah. that. You know, th- they've said goodbye to mom and it's just all those things. It's just it's a very tender scene and that all played pretty much in one shot. Yeah. Yeah. No, that was nice. I mean, car shots. Inside the car, that little silver car, mm-hmm. um, you know, uh, especially with, you know, uh, dad driving and, and his daughter behind him and, and those that, that little intimate thing and going over to the, you know, with the beans and all that stuff. Was that all just handheld, 200-foot uh, no, magazines, or how'd you do that? Usually on a s- camera slider, you know, we just poke into the door, okay. slide around, come back behind the, you know, toward the driver, toward George, and go back in. But you didn't rip a car apart. There wasn't a no. half a car or anything no. like that. Uh, no, but nothing. a lot of it was. But it was. Were you on a um, uh, an insert uh, trailer? Because it seemed like the background no. was still moving and no. all. No, they had stopped, didn't they? They, we they had, had stopped. They had stopped. stopped. Okay. And then there's the stuff in the jeep. Yes, and that was just purely lock off cameras, you know. So just hood mounts hood and, mounts, and right? side mounts, stuff mm-hmm. and, and stuff like that, yeah. and then. With um, a, a little, a little 
girl dancing. Right, the yes. hula girl. Yeah, that didn't move much, <laughs> did it? No, that was fun. Um, and then getting up into that red clay. Did you all have to wash the, I mean, that stuff sticks? Yeah, it gets everywhere. Yeah, like the red clay of Kauai. It's kind of uh, uh, known. Everything, yeah. all the vehicles have it on it. What um, was the palette of lenses used, particularly in this film? They were all uh, Panavision Primo lenses. Well, th was there like the 40? Was there the 27? Was you, know, you know, we tended to be on the wider lenses. Uh -huh. I don't know if those big wide close-ups. Right. Yeah, you know, a lot of 27, 35 millimeter close-ups. A lot of particular depth staging. Like the one shot particular um, uh, stands out to me. It's it's. I don't know what you call it. It wasn't a wake, but it was the pre, you know, the goodbye with all the, fa you know, the family and friends there. And he's so deep in the mat box. And then that young man, you know, says, you know, oh, just right. that's a bummer there. And there's that, you know, head turn and the focus back to him. And it just was such a really nice composition. It was really a nice way to get into where he was. You really read what was going on and then go out for a minute. Yeah, there's a lot of those kind of close-ups, you know, where George is just so prominent in foreground and things are going on background and his father-in-law too uh the, when they're yes. sitting at in yes. the, the young guy who's about to get punches mm -hmm. on the couch and you know and all that stuff yeah, no i think i you know i i really like the visuals that we did on here and i really like how we front focused uh george a lot of times even if you're on the back of his head and you know because we wanted to really get into him you know, right it wasn't about the other people it was about george and his troubles and his thoughts Loomis, that's what your focus puller, yes, right? Trevor yeah, Loomis. Trevor Loomis. He do you work with him job. a lot? On and off through many years. Okay, so yeah. do you have kind of a, a little a little team spirit thing going there? Do you talk well, to each other yeah, and oh decide yes. and, des and, and kind of just really figure out those moments? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Does he fight for those sometimes. Does he have his <laughs> hand on the lens or a remote? No, he's, he's, he's very hands-on. So okay. he's, he's there uh, with his hand on the lens. Yeah, very yeah. good, very good. That was done by a local uh, underwater photographer who, who did a wonderful job, mm -hmm. I think, you know, both in the swimming pool, you know. And, yeah, it was, a, it was her expression underwater. Yes. It was a, a great moment. The screaming underwater. Who was the uh, cameraman you know, on that? I can't remember his name right now. Uh, was it Ron, was it? Oh, God. I'm that sorry, I can't remember his Ron's name. last yeah. name, but he does a lot of underwater work yeah. there. And yeah. he did the, the, the lays at the end of the movie underwater when oh they're yeah. floating. Oh, yeah, beautiful shot, yeah. beautiful shot. Yeah, that was in, yeah, that gets me every time. Yeah. That's such a, you know, just them in the uh, the in the Hawaiian canoe yeah. and, and just going out there and doing that. And there really is that whole experience of the Howleys and, you know, and just having the whole business control of, of Hawaii. And I mean, it just really was a, just a terrific film. It was so nice to see again and, and really hear all the subtext there and realize that that was mom, you know, about to right. crash and burn uh, at the beginning. It's a very strong opening, the whole sound. And then all of a sudden you're seeing her having the greatest time. Right. Um, there's another question. Yes, in the back, please. I used to have an agent. I haven't had one for a while now. And uh, <laughs> I thought about getting it because, you know, negotiations are getting tougher every time you talk to a new producer. But, uh, no, I don't have an agent right now. <laughs> Yoga, a lot of stretching. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Little Pilates. I'm pretty religious at it, actually. I do it every day. At least, yeah, pretty much every day, an hour before call. Well, what steady cam are you flying? I'm flying the Pro still. Okay. Yeah. You've had that for a while now. I've had that yeah. for since they first brought it out. Any particular upgrades? No, actually, and I'm in that process now since digital has become more, HD know, monitor? I haven't had, I don't have one yet. Still a green screen? Still a green screen. Right on. Still a traditionalist, but still doing film, so yeah, that's yeah, been, yeah. you know, the main reason. Well, it's around the corner. I know it is. You know, you just I know have to. Is. When you want to know about monitors, <laughs> well, talk to that man, Mr. Frankel. He knows that he's got the skinny on all the monitors. Good. I will talk to you about that. No, I've been. I, it's. I've been day calling on a lot of television lately, and it's you know using the Alexa, mm -hmm. and so I'm realizing that I need to move or start upgrading the rig and moving it's, on. It's a whole other thing yeah. watching it in color. Yes. Yeah, and a good picture too. Um, I too have a green screen, but I used Steve's rig once and um, on a big day, and, and it was just really a lot of fun seeing the actually watching the program there. It's like, oh, 
I'd, I'd kind of forget that I was doing it if this thing wasn't so heavy. <laughs> um, another question, please. We're going to wrap it up soon. Um, Scott, is there any particular thing that uh, you come away from this film um, thinking that might be nice to share to an audience? Well, my admiration for Alexander. I think he's a great storyteller. And, you know, by watching this movie, you know, a number of times now, you really see the subtle things that he put in the script and the humor that he puts in. And his main goal on this movie was to keep everything authentic. Mm -hmm. You know, we shot in real people's homes, very little set dressing. And even us as a crew, when we worked in the houses, we had to take our shoes off to go in and out of the house. They made a great deal. I mean, George did that in and out of everybody's and house. It's kind of a Hawaiian and it is kind tradition. of yeah, it totally is. And it was very weird for us because here we are working, and you know, you know, we're not used to taking our shoes off right. just to go inside the house. But you know, he made us do it. So if you would have saw it, still sh photos of our set, you know, we're all in socks or bare feet inside. Did Fox, was it a Fox production? Yes. Did Fox let you guys wear open toe shoes, like flops we were, and stuff? Yeah, we were, oh. there was no restriction on that. In fact, Alexander made us take our shoes off. So yeah, a lot of the studios make you wear closed toe shoes, which yeah. make it so just So it actually was difficult. a little uncomfortable, yeah. and you're working around stands and equipment yeah. and dollies, yeah. and you, you're barefoot or you're, you're just in your socks, and you, it makes you think twice about where you're standing. Right, right. Yeah. Uh, well, um, yes, in the back. That was Nothing. my next question. No. You got something? Book early <laughs> to avoid disappointment, really. Yeah, it's good to have a little bit of break, you know? Yes. You do your day calls and yep. stuff. The next big one will come. Um, that was one of my, yeah, what was next. And then uh, one of my, my last question is somebody is uh, beginning to be a camera operator. What, would you, what advice do you give them? Oh, boy, that's a, that's a big open question. Um, it's not about the technical things that you do with the camera. It's, it's what you say with it. You know, it's what you say with it, what's the story, it's, and how you express it visually. Mm -hmm. The actual yeah. moving it through yeah. space, manipulating the frame. Yes. Very good. Well, thank you very much, Scott. It was a real thank honor you. and a privilege. Thank you very much. I'm glad you liked it. Yeah. All right. And thank you very much, everybody, for coming tonight. And tomorrow, please uh, be with us as we finish our fifth of the five series, and that will be with Will Arnott, and the, uh, the film is The Help. And it did pretty well on the SAG Awards just the other night. All the ladies got some awards. Yep. Very well. Very well. All right. Thank you very much, and drive home safe.